Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. I'm Deborah. And uh, for this session, we have with us uh, Vladmi uh, Madenov. His section is called uh, Using Gamification to Generate Leads in the Banking and Fashion Sectors. So Vladimir has 14 years of experience uh, in e-commerce and digital marketing, including SMBs, startups, and corporations. He's currently the director of two digital marketing agencies and has participated in the implementations of dozens of web shops, many of which went on to win some awards. So Vladimir Madenov is also a consultant for digital transformation. Vladimir, this stage is yours. Thank you, Deborah, for nice introduction. Uh, just to start the presentation. Hello, Multic Nation. How are you? Uh, I hope you're doing well. It is a great pleasure to be uh, with you today. And uh, let's talk about gamification. And let's talk uh, how gamification and uh, marketing automation could bring uh, great results to your company or organization. Uh, people like to play games from childhood to the old game, to the old age. So this is our topic for today. Uh, gamification is uh, important in uh, gathering new leads. And uh, why you should uh, listen to this presentation? I will show you. I come from Serbia. Serbia is a small country in Europe. Uh, Serbia is red, small red dot on the world map. And why is that important? I will show you on the next slide. You probably know uh, these two guys. Uh, one of them is uh, two time NBA MVP, uh, NBA Finals MVP, and NBA Champion, and arguably one of the best basketball players in the world. And the second one is the best tennis player ever. Sorry, Feder and Dal Pence, but that's a fact. And these guys have two things in common. Uh, one is a nickname. Uh, they have the same nickname, nickname, the Joker. And the other one, uh, they both come from Serbia. So we love to play games and we are very good in playing games. So that's why you should stay and watch my presentation. I'm just kidding, but I hope uh, and I'm sure that this presentation will be useful to you. Uh, after the introduction, we will talk about gamification, uh, what are the games we use for gathering leads. Hold and, on. Uh, Sorry. Presentation. Sorry to interrupt, Vladimir. Your slides are not showing to us. Can you try and share them again, please? Okay, sure. Sorry. I will start them all over again, okay? Sorry to interrupt again. Okay, is everything okay now? What's our topic for today? After the introduction, we'll talk about gamification, how we use games, and at the end of the presentation, we have two examples. Uh, one from the banking sector and one from the fashion industry. Uh, it's uh, very different industries, that's important, and types of gamifications are different. And that's important for you to know that uh, in each uh, industry or sector, we could implement those kind of games. I'm a head of sales and uh, marketing in SalesNap. SalesNap is a marketing automation tool that enables detailed lead tracking, lead limitations, and uh, helps you organize your marketing campaigns. SalesNap is a marketing automation tool based on Motic, of course. And we are a full service agency. We do all things uh, connected with uh, marketing strategy and marketing. And from uh, gathering leads, uh, from brand, brand awareness, uh, to creating marketing campaigns, flow, and promotion and all digital channels. But today, we will talk only about one segment. It's gamification. How to generate new leads 
and collect valuable data through games and quiz. That's me, Deborah already exact me. As I said, I'm head uh, of marketing and sales at Sales Steps, also a consultant for digital transformation. So everybody loves games and we have been playing games since we were kids. And uh, I have a younger daughter who is uh, uh, eight months old. She loves to play games. Uh, older daughter, five years old, loves to play games. Uh, me also love to play games. My parents love to play games. Why we all like that? Because it's fun, excitement, uh, it brings joy. And also we could win some prizes or rewards. So we at SalesNet rec recognized games as a useful tool it in lead generation process. So I will introduce you to games we have. First one, uh, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, it's a fun game. Uh, we could apply it to a website, web shop, or some landing page. So people come to the web to the web page, uh, rotate the wheel, and they could get some reward, maybe some discount, some price, maybe nothing. Uh, or they just need to fill out some form in order to get that reward. Memory game, in memory game, you must find the two same, fill two same objects and connect them. It's based on a children game of memorizing cards. Also, we have stretch cards. With your finger or with mouse point, you can uh, stretch field and get some reward for it. And we have a slot game. Of course, uh, inspiration for slot game came from uh, online slot machine. And uh, this is very interesting for uh, online betting industry or gaming industry. Uh, we can use uh, numbers, uh, fruits, uh, or some items or objects that are connected to our client. So we can personalize these games. So oh, let's play. I will show you how the games look on our test website. This is the spin game. You can rotate and at the end you have a form to fill with an email, also custom fields, segmentation questions. Uh, now it's uh, gender, where do you live? You can put whatever you want. Also uh, participants should uh, have uh, some agreement with, uh, with our conditions on the website so they can fill the form and we send them reward. Also, there is a memory game. As you see, uh, time could be factored in, in these games. So uh, the fastest uh, competitor will get some reward. Scratch game is quite simple. You can scratch the field and uh, Wheel of Fortune, of course, when you click rotate, rotates, uh, but also we can customize it for one client. We have a birthday cake with candles. So that's the games. And we go to our next activation, big activation. Uh, those are quizzes. Uh, quizzes are a proven way to attract uh, users and engage them. Uh, everybody loves to play quizzes. And we can customize quizzes based on client's need and also uh, what the audience of the client wants. Uh, we created several different topics like sports quiz, uh, quiz about uh, literature, books, uh, quiz about science. Uh, there are numerous topics so we can adapt them to our customers. It is important uh, for us to quiz, uh, quiz to be uh, fun, engaging, to have good questions. We don't put these kind of questions because they are too hard to answer. We want people to have fun and to find the correct answers. So uh, the topic of the quiz itself so is always chosen between, between topics that are related uh, to our client. And uh, as I said, in human nature lies the desire for competition and general testing of knowledge. So 
Quiz mechanics. All quiz participants leave their basic data, first and last name, email address, and sometimes phone number, phone number or other data. They all leave it through registration form. Next, we would ask them two segmentation questions. Uh, why we choose two segmentation questions? Because one is not enough and more than two are maybe too much friction for the user. That's because, because of that, uh, we choose to have two segmentation questions that would be used to adjust further communication with users. As you already know, our quizzes and other activations, we want them to collect data. And later on during the marketing campaign, we will choose how to segment them, how to personalize and how to implement it to sold our products or services. Each participant in the quiz would answer 10 questions out of possible 100 questions. Why 100 questions? Because almost every time 90 questions are about topic of the quiz and 10 of them are related to the client or some product service that is important to the client. Also, uh, we, we must uh, have more questions in order because one participant can play quiz several times. So we automatically reorder questions, we automatically reorder the answers. So participant uh, would have different kind of quiz and we prevent frauds. Each, each question would contain four possible answers. Uh, we tested the two, three answers uh, files too much friction, so four is the best possible way. Usually, three participants of the quiz uh, who give the most correct answers in the shortest time win prizes. It is important to be more than one prize, and maybe you should have uh, 10 or 20 prizes, but usually there are three big prizes. The simplified campaign flow, we have uh, lead my campaign on different digital channels. Uh, we connect the people, uh, then send them to microsite when they play, where they play the quiz, we collect database, and we send them mail automation campaign and nurturing campaign so they could connect with contact center of the client. What is very important that we continuously monitor campaigns through Google and Meta tools, as well as campaign effects. So we optimize campaign daily and based on the analytics, we suggest creating new ads and deleting ads that don't give good results. Case study in banking sector regarding the quiz. Our client is a bank company uh, who have uh, uh, branches in seven different countries in the region and we did several quizzes uh, in uh, all countries and all of them were successful. We chose between different teams and in this case study I will present a case from Serbia. Uh, the aim of the activation was to create leads and convert them into bank clients. The products we promoted were cash loans and refinancing loans. The campaign contained several components, Meta and Google Ads, also activation in the form of TV series, Knowledge Quiz, which was used to create a database and to segment visitors. Automated seg sending of drip mails to users from the SalesNet tool in accordance with the segmentation performed on the quiz microsite. And this is very important. We created a microsite where qualified leads can calculate all terms of the loan and schedule a call with the contact center. Also, the time that suits them to meet with an advisor at the bank's branch. Why is that important? Because we want them not only to play the quiz, we want for them to visit microsite where they can play with the calculator of the loan. So we know that they are interesting taking loan. 
that are hot leads. Also, at the end, we were sending nurturing emails after the campaign has ended. This is the flow we created for this particular case study. From digital channels we used, uh, we, of course, uh, have budget for social media, Viber campaign, also we use uh, email database. So participants came to the landing page and they first have to uh, confirm by SMS message. After the confirmation, uh, they have first fermentation question. Do you have regular income? This is a very important question because if they not have regular income, they can't take a loan. So they are disqualified from our from OTIC and from uh, marketing automation process. In second segmentation question, we ask them where will they spend uh, their money if they win the price uh, to cover debts, shop, go to the vacation, or maybe invest in home. So based on that answer, uh, we have these different segments. In the Mautic, they play the quiz. When they play the quiz, they could share results on Facebook or different social media. If they share results, they have chance to play quiz again and have better results. This is very important for us and uh, that's maybe the key of the success of quiz because people are sharing their experience with our quiz and they invite their friends to play. When we have our contacts in Moti, we segment them and later we send uh, drip mail campaigns based on their answers. So that would be process. And creative is very important for us in order to get the attention. So we use banners. We use A-B testing of several types of banners and we see uh, which one is better, which one uh, not doing well. So several times during the campaign, in agreement with the client, corrections were made. And in this way, the campaign performed much better and had more conversions than if only one set of banners had been released. So these are the examples of banners. As I mentioned, our team was TV series that are very popular in our country. And we chose to use pictograms and we created several pictures that represent some popular TV shows. Maybe you recognize the first one is from the X-Files. And my favorite, at this time in three weeks, you can be the winner of the quiz and recognizable vehicle from TV show Only Fools and Courses, British sitcom that is very, very popular in Serbia. And uh, very, also very popular is sentence from uh, one of the characters, Del Boy, who said, uh, next, this uh, time next year, we will be millionaires. So uh, we use uh, this kind of uh, messages to connect our quiz with popular TV shows. Here's uh, one of the questions. Uh, I will show you the interface, uh, the time, number of questions and answers so participant could choose one of the answer. Also, uh, when uh, participants resolve the quiz, when they answer all the questions, you get the results immediately and maybe some comparison to other participants. But also, uh, we gave them the, the opportunity to schedule a meeting with our client and also to share their results to fa Facebook or some other social media and get a chance to play again and improve their score. Here are the results. Uh, Serbia is a country with uh, around uh, 7 million citizens and our reach was 2 million and that's a great result for our country. We use Facebook, Instagram and Google advertising to reach them. We have a 
43,000 of quiz participants. That's the number of people participating in the quiz. And we have 30,000 leads. That's the number of people with regular income. As I already mentioned, we use first segmentation questions to know if the people who play quiz have a regular income, because if they don't, they can, can't take all. 6,300 are very hot leads. That's the total number of people who clicked on the link in the email and went to the calculator where they could schedule a call with the call center. And 2,300 were conversions. That's the total number of people who booked a call from the call center and scheduled a visit to the branch. For us, they were conversions. Of course, not every one of them uh, became a bank, bank client, but it's up to people from the bank, their salesmen, uh, to do some conversation one-on-one -on -one with them and convert them into the clients. But uh, they met all of our criteria and become conversion for us. And that's the first case study. And the second case study is about fashion industry. Our client is uh, a regional company uh, that have uh, premium fashion brands. They have several brick and mortar stores around the countries and they have web shop. Our focus was completely on the client's web shop. The primary goal was to increase the number of contacts in the database as well as to update existing contacts with more detailed ones. They already had, had uh, 70,000 existing contacts, but they only have uh, their names and uh, emails. So uh, we need to update them with more reliable data. And the secondary goal was to increase sales. In order to achieve the primary goal of collecting more leads, we organized the scratch card activation lasting a month. And what's important to mention, the campaign was not sponsored on social networks. Only the people who visit the web shop could play the game in the pop-up or in landing page. So we didn't have any promotional activity on social networks or on other digital channels. Only people who already wanted to, to go to the web shop, they, see, they can see the activation. In addition to basic information such as name and surname, phone number, email address and gender, we have two segmentation questions for the participants. So we can continue communication depending on answers. Those segmentation questions uh, was regarding uh, what do they wear, uh, maybe they like uh, sports, fashion, some uh, or children items. Uh, so we can collect some valuable data and put those people based on their answers into the segments, into the different segments. Here are the results. We have increase in leads in less than a month. We have 21% increase in leads. As I mentioned, they already uh, had 70,000 leads. Number of people who played the game were around 21,000. We have 1% of conversion. Conversion for us were people who came to the web shop, played the game, and they receive, after playing the game, they receive a 5% five, five discount. And they immediately buy, bought something on the website. So conversion for people who came to the web shop and immediately after playing the game, they bought some items. More than two, 200 uh, people do that. And that's important because our marketing budget for this activation was zero. And as you already know, uh, the, goal is, the goal was to collect data and later on during the marketing campaigns uh, with good segmentation and personalization, uh, we could bring uh, more and better results. So with marketing budget of promotion that was zero, we achieved uh, some immediately sales from the people who played the activation. And one bonus tip for the end regarding exit pop-up banner. 
as you already probably know, exit pop up banner is triggered when the user tries to leave the page. And it usually contains some specific benefit. And in our case, uh, we use Wheel of Fortune. And what's very important statistics pop ups that appear shortly after landing on the site increase the user's reg registration percentage by approximately 2%, while that percentage for exit pop ups is around 8%, and for gamified exit pop ups, the percentage goes up to 30%. And that's huge improvement. So I recommend to you to use uh, gamified exit pop-ups. Thank you for your attention. Uh, let's connect and let's work together. Vladimir, we will now open the session for uh, questions. We already have one question from Raul Sinde. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, he asks uh, if you have a plugin or how do you connect that uh, gamification with uh, Motic? Uh, yes, uh, we have a simple, let's say simple plugin uh, that we implement in, in Motic or Cellset because Cellset is based on Motic uh, and uh, it's like uh, Facebook Pixel or Google Pixel. So it's easy to, to implement uh, the quiz and the data goes directly to our tool. Okay. Uh, if you have any more questions, folks, you can post them on the chat or on the Q&A session. Uh, I have one question for you. Um, how much would you say we could uh, personalize these uh, customizations uh, depending on the client? Uh, yes, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think we can very well personalize. And uh, we use uh, different kinds of activation for different clients, but also those activations uh, could look completely different. For example, stretch games. If you use it for clients who maybe have some items uh, with paintings or something else, we could paint paint the screen or something like that. If, if there is a birthday of the company, we could use birthday cake. Also the quizzes we uh, tested uh, several topics that are quite quite different, like uh, sport quizzes, fashion quizzes, uh, about literature, books, uh, science. They all were successful because uh, we talk first to the client to see uh, what are their needs for the for this activation, and later on uh, we do some research for uh, for the audience. You know uh, what audience wants, maybe. Uh, it's not connected with uh, with uh, client plans. So we, based on the, the client needs and what the audience wants, we create team for the quiz or some activation, and uh, they were all successful. So uh, we could personalize and we want to personalize every activation. Okay, so. While there is nobody else, I'll keep asking. Uh, and uh, how do you choose the best channel uh, depending on the client and the segment you're working with this activation? Uh, well, uh, depending on the budget and depending on the audience, as I said, uh, we choose our promotional uh, channel. And usually there, uh, there are a lot of different uh, channels that brings uh, different uh, creativity or uh, uh, creative banners or something like that. But um, in our experience, uh, best channels for those kind of promotions, uh, Facebook and Instagram, these two uh, social medias we did on LinkedIn, on Twitter, uh, also mail database that client already had, but uh, social media may be connected with gamification in, the, in their core uh, our gamification, so people uh, are used to go to social media, maybe play a little game. So uh, that, that, that shows the best for us. Okay. And uh, the last one I have, I'm still waiting for the audience, uh, is uh, are there any pitfalls to choosing this uh, this model, like any 
not cons necessarily, but things that we need to be on the lookout for um, when we go to a gaming uh, activation strategy? Y yes, of course, uh, we should test the system if it works. Uh, we, we must prevent any kind of frauds. Uh, like uh, there, there is people who only are playing games and tr trying to win the award no matter the cost. So they try to uh, cheat the system, but uh, we have to be uh, careful with that. And we, uh, as we check the creative, uh, the channels, we also check our system uh, and uh, the participants, uh, if, if we uh, acknowledge some kind of fraud, we disqualify those participants. Uh, it happens and it could be a problematic, but uh, at every participant have to agree with our, you know, we have a type of rules and they have to agree with our rules. We always use those rules when, when people plan quizzes. In small activations, uh, we don't have those rules because in small activations, usually uh, each participant receive some kind of reward, maybe 5% discount or 10% discount or something like that. So we don't need uh, to, to verify those rules or accounts. I see. Uh, we have one from uh, Madeline here. Uh, if there are sections or sectors or audiences where gamification might not work, in your opinion? Uh, well, I think... Uh, it works in most of the industries, maybe all industries. Because we mostly work with the banks. Uh, we did with this, we had several clients in banking sector. I presented one, as I mentioned, uh, they, they have branches in seven different countries. We tried quizzes in all the countries. And why I'm showing uh, this case study? Because banks are very traditional and uh, the customers are, you know, you must take loan, it's not fun. Uh, but uh, we try to, you know, just people to have some relax, to play a game, maybe win some prize, and connect with our client. And if in banking sector we succeed in that, I think in, in other industries uh, we could also be successful. Okay, thank you very much. Um... We don't have any more questions from the audience. Um, okay, so I think for now, those are the questions we had. Uh, I thank you again for being here. And if you could please uh, go to the lounge and maybe people will uh, exchange some ideas and, and thank you all for being here as well. And thank you, Vladimir. Thank you, thank you, bye. Bye-bye.